Our so-called new boats always seem to have some really sketchy rigging. If you've ever needed to replace your sailboat rigging, these videos are definitely for you. Today we're trying to measure the rigging for to get an estimate of pricing. So I'm gonna be setting up Justine uh, in the hot sun and uh, she's gonna be taking the measurements of the lowers, the intermediates, the caps and the backstay and the forestay. First you're gonna go up, we're gonna measure the lowers which requires you nothing just to hold the tape in the right place. Then you get to the spreaders, so you're gonna put the first shackle there, you're gonna pass. Oh, sorry. Let go. Anyway, that is a dog. <laughs> and on each step, you measure the diameter of the slot where the lollipop goes in. Basically, we're using 30 meter long uh, tape, and we're gonna measure twice or twice just to make sure. <laughs> Some of the equipment we'll be using to go up the mast include the bosun's chair, calipers and some trusty old shackles. Robbie prepares two halyards that have stubborn knots on their ends. We're taking safety very seriously here. Two well-tied knots with their extra bits neatly tucked in. One halyard will be for the bosun's chair and one will be tied to the climbing harness. That's just to hold a knot. The bosun's chair that we borrowed from sailing vessel Ventus is also kind of sketch, so we'll be utilizing Tony's climbing harness as well. <laughs> he winches me up to the top of the lower shroud. Perfect. Okay. Where I find a pretty sad looking tea ball or lollipop fitting. Here we measure the slot of the backing plate. Inches, fractions, 11 16th mode uh, millimeters, right? 17 millimeters, 55. And then we measure the length of the wire from all the way at the bottom to the armpit of the T-ball fitting where the wire ends in the swage here at the top. Place? Yep. The starboard side lower shroud is not any prettier. Where the T-ball must have failed completely in the past, it's jury-rigged together with some rusty clamps. Here we measure all the same parts. The backing plate hole and the length of the wire. Robbie pulls me up a couple more feet to the inner forestay. Okay. which still has its rubber plug for safety. <laughs> yeah. The moment of truth for something that has caused a lot of work and strife in our last boat, the spreader tips. Not nearly as bad as Rosa's mast. I clip the measuring tape onto the spreader tip with the shackle. Up past the deck light, steaming light, and radar setup to measure the intermediate shroud now. Good! Good! Robbie! Good! Yep! At first glance, the T-ball fitting, or lollipop, is in much better condition than the lower one. Good! I should have popped out the rubber plug while taking the measurements of the backing plate. Looks nice and shiny from here, though. Up next to the second spreader, with some gross, gooey, crusty stuff on it that might be bird poo. I'm here at the second spreader tip, to attach the measuring tape and shimmy on up to take the measurements of the cap shroud, almost at the top of the mast. Back down the same way that I was winched up to release the measuring tape from the spreader tips. 
Okay, I'm gonna take off the other shackle. And rappel to the opposite side of the mast to measure all that remaining starboard side stuff. Robbie didn't like the idea of me bringing a knife up the mast, so I had to scratch with the calipers to remove that one remaining spreader booty. It's just dirtier. We repeated the process here on the starboard side. and traveled those extra couple of inches up past the cap shroud to measure the bird caging forestay and backstay. Good. Here on the backstay, we might change up the way that the swage attaches to the masthead. So I took a couple of different measurements. The same for the forestay. Yeah. Last but not least, the running backstays, or what we're calling the running backstays right now. We think that we will probably make these out of synthetic material, like synthetic rigging, because they are meant to be moved around more often, depending on if we're going up or downwind. Now that Robbie has created a beautiful, doodly masterpiece on a scrap of cereal box, we will need to transfer these measurements onto something more legible for the rigging shop. We're gonna start with the length. Head stay, yeah. Yeah, head stay is approximately 16 meter, 16.65 meter. And the millimeter, the eight. wire size? Eight. All eight. The aft ones, the eight right now, I think we're gonna make them 10. We're gonna make them, we're gonna buff more them More than up. the head stay and the Yes, because they're, 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 they're the ones that broke. All these measurements were made knowing that it will just be for an estimate. So these are not the final numbers. The forestay and furler remain a little bit of a question as to their exact length and what the attachment point looks like inside or under the roller furler here. We're still not sure whether to put a turnbuckle there or uh, to reuse that piece over there, which is pretty nice. And it's one of the few things on the boat which is in great condition. I'm still gonna take it apart and have a look, but for now, for the back stay, our measurement comes to the to uh, top of the stay puller. And uh, all the other stays are technically pin to pin. In the boat I grew up, we had two exact same ones. And I don't think we've ever replaced them or seen any damage on them. Or well, they don't make them any anymore. Now they make them hydraulic, which are a pain in the neck. And they still make a few like analog ones. I don't know if you call it analog, like mechanical strength ones. You put the winch handle yeah, in? Yeah, you put a winch handle in and you crank it. It's to add rake to your mast, yes. Are we keeping the turn are we reusing the turnbuckles of all all the shrouds? Nope. We're not using any of the turnbuckles again on the boat. I don't know how long they've been on this boat. I don't know how long they've been replaced. They don't look particularly bad, but it's mostly for for convenience, uh, I think we're gonna put everything from one rigger to avoid having him to hunt for turnbuckles and then they're the, they're the wrong way or they're the wrong diameter and they have the wrong tread and it's a disaster. Unless you're physically there with the turnbuckles in your hand and you're doing it, it's, it's a disaster to order. But each turnbuckle costs about, uh, what would you say, like a hundred bucks each? Something in that realm. Between the 60 to 100 bucks, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be an added cost for sure but we might end up they don't even fit so then we lose 10 times more money yeah and, and to be for the safety factor of both yeah. in the order itself and and in the real world it's just might be easier we made a little bit of an oh. Oh. what what what's this oh. what? what is it so our dog is telling us that oh. uh, yes that the rigging is uh oh. 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 
So we sent off the rigging sheet to get an estimate of the price for the rigging. We haven't gotten it back yet, but we have made estimations based on prices online, and it looks like it'll probably cost between three and four thousand um, dollars. That's not including the price of getting it here somehow. So it's going to be something we will have to measure again for safety yeah. and maybe even a third time. We just want to be really sure about our measurements if we're going to be spending that kind of money eventually. We could go out of two options. The option one is to get the ring complete, which means both ends of the stay swaged. The other one is to uh, have the top uh, section swaged, then the bottom ones uh, we would leave uh, unswaged and slightly longer than in our measurements and uh, use uh, stay locks. And what's the reason for doing kind of a half and half stay lock and half swaged? It gives you a little, a little bit more of a wiggle. It gives you a little bit more of a wiggle room. Yeah, just in case uh, we end up receiving all this rigging, it ends up that anything is off, anything that you don't expect, anything that we don't account for. I don't know what that would be, but that's that's the idea is that something we haven't accounted for might change our might change the circumstances so that we would want to um, cut a little bit off or need a little bit of, of wiggle room. Anyways, that's all about the subject of rigging. Stay tuned for other videos coming up on the subject of uh, electronics electronics and, and the subject of our engine for those who are wondering what happened to it and also thank you to all the supporters and viewers and patrons who have been sending us much needed equipment for all these projects